And the Lord said, turn on those lights, bro. Elsa, turn on those damn lights. Make yourself useful because we got plenty to talk about today as Bitcoin pumps up humongously in the last 24 hours as <laughs> the U.S. government comes in and saves the day. Doesn't everyone love that? Anyways, uh, there's plenty to talk about today following up in yesterday's higher term time from analysis, looking at these statistical setups that were suggesting that upside from yesterday's levels were more likely than not uh, to the tune of about 10 to 15 percent, maybe even more. So where does that kind of land us for today? What does that mean for the next week? And what's the next big thing to be looking for? Well, before we get into that, I do want to let you know that one, we have a sale going on. It's a five year anniversary of this place. Holy shit. What the actual hell? <laughs> what? the actual hell, man. It's been five years. This has been certainly one of the highlights of my life. And I just want to say a massive thank you for being a part of this community. Of course, um, with all of that in mind, you can find all information about, uh, you know, about what's going on on the crown trading application. Other than that, I want to also let you know that if you're interested in kind of understanding the greater perspective of what's going on in the markets right now, from a macro perspective, definitely check out Elliot from Elio Trades. He's been phenomenal. He's been inc incredibly educational, educational, yeah, <laughs> educational. And, uh, I I've actually learned a lot from him. And, uh, and he makes it an incredibly well digestible form for people who maybe don't have like a full on economics background. Anyways, without further ado, let's just jump right into it right now, starting off with the five day Gaussian channel. So this is going to give us a kind of a perspective of where we are in the greater scheme of things as far as, uh, you know, current price action. And as you can see, Bitcoin bounced off of the bottom end of that channel. We said that was likely uh, coming off of two or not Tuesdays, but I think it was um, uh, Saturday's closure. Um, with that said, I certainly was wrong, however, yesterday of anticipating that probably was going to test somewhere back down around the bottom side of the channel. We didn't really get much of that. But ultimately, the bounce based off of the daily setups that we're looking at on the daily stochastic oscillator and also the daily jewel uh, playing out from those regions that we spoke about yesterday, exactly to where? Exactly to the fucking mean. The mean band! The mean band is at it again. So far, we're pr providing the impetus for a very short-term rejection, but the real question is, where do things close within the next three days? As that would put us at uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, Thursday's closure, which, by the way, comes right after <laughs> CPI and PPI. <sighs> Some good old PPI action coming out. Um, but, uh, but basically, and to put it into a, a, a more digestible segment here, if Bitcoin can actually close above the mean band, which is now all the way down right around 23,100, then at that point, that, that would be when I would say, hey, Bitcoin's very likely to make a nice leg up somewhere around 26,000 bucks, the top end of the band uh, as it is right now. Sorry, about 26 and a half thousand bucks and potential for more as well. Why is that important long term? Well, because anytime we have seen Bitcoin lose the, uh, sorry, uh, not lose, but regain the mean band after after losing the bottom side of the red band here, it has gotten a free ride to the top of the band. And in three out of the four prior iterations, it's gotten a free ride towards actually new highs. Now, in terms of timing, that can take months and months and months. But ultimately, that would be the, you know, another major uh, point within the long term case that the lows are in. And, you know, generally, it's wise to be looking for sideways for a while and then maybe up, you know, probably, you know, maybe later this year, uh, probably more like 2024. Uh, but, you know, you can see several examples. I think this is probably the most easy one to follow over here. You know, Bitcoin loses the bottom side of the red band, regains it over here grinds up against the mean band, gets rejected several times, retest the bottom side, boom, uh, closes above right here, free ride to the top, and then busts on through doing the bus in action all the way to not new highs, but, uh, but you know, you get the idea in this case. Uh, this one obviously led towards new highs, so on and so forth. And in this case, Bitcoin will have a chance theoretically to do this at the end of this week around Thursday closure for the five-day time frame. By the same token, as long as Bitcoin is below it, just as before, just as before when, when Bitcoin was grinding up against it when it was around uh, 24 to 25,000 bucks, as long as Bitcoin is below it, risk still does remain lower. But I said it's a pretty damn good response from the bottom side of this band. Do I think that this is an inverted herp and derp? No, I don't. I don't think that that actually even works all that well, to be quite honest with you. Um, so I won't make any measure moves upon that. But 
ultimately if Bitcoin can break above the mean band. That's that's at the point where uh, very likely we do see that move into the deeper $20,000 territory and maybe more over time as well. So what can essentially corroborate that story? What can give us a little bit of uh, guidance on these statistics as far as this goes? Well, I want to go back on over here to the daily stochastic oscillator. We were looking at this setup over the past uh, two to three days now. Well, we were actually really looking at it for like the past week and a half to two weeks. Uh, but more importantly, it did fire off uh, two days ago. Um, of which anytime that we've seen the daily stochastic oscillator get down to about 15 and then turn to the upside, so in this kind of critical region right here, that has led to a highly probable bounce over the past three years with these statistics over here relevant. So out of the past three years, there were 14 iterations. Out of the 14 iterations, 10 of them played out with a nice move to the upside, giving it about a 71.5% strike rate. I'd say that that's pretty good. Um, you know, again, make your own decisions for that with an average return of about 17.5%. Now, average return of 17.5%. Let's put that in perspective. Thus far from setup uh, occurring to where uh, Bitcoin is currently put in the wick high, just under 11% which would be at the bottom side of the first standard deviation as far as the distribution of results goes. So what does that mean? Well, that does mean that it would be relevant to say that uh, you know we've already hit the easy target for that. However, we can look at the guidance from the average amount of days that it typically does take for this particular setup to play out, which on the win side is an average of just under 10 days. Again, first standard deviation right here, giving us a range between about a week to three, three weeks or so. Um, so would it be relevant to say that this one is probably played out with, uh, you know, over the course of less than two days from firing off? Statistics would say no, that's unlikely. It probably goes, you know, a little bit more towards the average, maybe in a in a more crazy situation, depending upon how CPI and PPI go. You know, could even go for the tops out of the first standard deviation. So the next uh, the next area of interest would be the average at about seventeen and a half percent. Where would that put Bitcoin? And why does that matter? Well, keeping in mind again where the mean where the mean band is on the Gaussian channel over here at twenty three thousand bucks. Well, anything above there um, by Thursday, probably going to look a lot better. 17% would put Bitcoin, which is the average, uh, just a, around 24000 bucks. Seems like kind of a far shot from here, to be fair. But yeah, it, you know, that, that is where it, would, where it would be. Again, I'm just reading the statistics. That's it. If things were to go for the deeper end of the first standard deviation at about, what was it, 24%? 25% basically, where would that put Bitcoin? That would put Bitcoin on new highs. Uh, let me actually see where that is. Oh, what do you know? 26,100. Oh, that's pretty damn similar to the top side of the Gaussian channel over here. So again, you can, can kind of see you know, um, how one domino needs, leads to the next one. But of course, it's predicated upon the actual busting action through about 23,000 bucks, um, especially on a five-day closing basis. But for right now, you know, so far, so good. And just referencing the stats over here, you know, it would still seem reasonable uh, to be looking for. Any, anyways, let me just make sure that I'm recording and the microphone's working. That's good. Yeah, we are. All right, we have another one. So yesterday we also brought up the daily jewel setup, similar to what we looked at on the stochastic oscillator. However, this one a little bit more powerful and a little bit more long term as well. What essentially is the setup here? Well, anytime that we've seen the daily jewel get down into the critical zone and then turn white and more importantly turn up from the critical zone, uh, we've witnessed, you know, similar to the daily stochastic, a nice sizable bounce. That was confirmed yesterday as well right here now even supported by the dmi as you can see it turns green and this current close you're going to have a chance to turn a uh, cyan which would you know be a lot better <laughs> anyways uh showing the results over the full history of bitcoin so there's been uh, several over the full history of bitcoin back tested them all we've seen that these stats over here have been relevant um, from that first closure ticking white and out of uh, 13 historical iterations 11 played out with a big upside move. I do want to say for this particular one, uh, it was not uncommon to retest somewhere around the lows of the initial setup. Take that as you will. Um, so what I'm trying to say is that, you know, things could theoretically do like this. Could, could be something like that. Basically, the setup is viable as long as Bitcoin's close above uh, 19,600. Um, as long as Bitcoin's above there, probabilities remain in favor of the upside. Anyways, um, in this case, the average return for this one, about 15 and a quarter percent. 
from setup given and typically happens over the course of about two to four weeks, let's say. So, you know, this one fired off uh, officially, yeah, officially actually right here. So it would actually be, be going from there. Uh, 14 or what was it? What exactly was it? 15%, you know, from that area would put Bitcoin basically around the current highs of this rally, you know, in like the low uh, 25s, obviously would play hand in hand again with this chart over here. And uh, if it goes through anything more than that, then, you know, that's probably where you start to get your 26,000 uh, numbers from. Uh, but again, you know, in the short term, if there is going to be a rejection, if there's even going to be an invalidation of these particular setups, it would very likely happen from this current area, actually, um, as we'll go over in a bit here. Uh, fully validated, obviously, below 19.7 uh, or so. And in the short term, with the daily closure below about 21.3, let's say, 21.2 region, or you could just say 21, make it nice and easy and round. Anyways, uh, moving on into that next topic where we can speak about the relatively short term over here. Um, this is an hourly HPDR uh, chart, and we can see that Bitcoin is having several closes above the blue 50% of historic returns range highs, again, on the hourly. Started over here on that big breakout late, uh, late for me Sunday, <laughs> and uh, and what happened after that? Uh, it's traded all the way up north of the holy shit, north of the um, is that the ninety five? Uh, between the ninety five and ninety nine percent of historic returns range, so right here. So, you know, is this like a a probable bl uh, uh, pullback region? Well, yeah, it makes sense, at least for a consolidation. Pullback, not the same thing as reversal. We'll go over reversal conditions in a bit here. Well, basically below the level that we just spoke about. Um, but on the shorter term time frames, you know, caution below about 21.8 or so on like a four hour closure. Anyways, uh, in the short term, you know, is it, you know, is there a potential for a pullback here? Well, once it is trading above the top side of the 50% of historical returns range highs, we can start to cross check for a decline in close over closure on volatility represented by the BBWP indicator, which happens right here. Once that happens, yes, there is a higher probability of a short-term pullback. Is that reasonable to expect after like a $3,000 screaming rally? I don't know, maybe, it's like <laughs> kind of. Uh, but yeah, out of 50 iterations, 36 played, played with a uh, short-term pullback um, over the course of the next 18 and a half hours on average. Uh, given an average return of about two spots, 60%. So that would be, that would be, yeah, back down somewhere around like 21,900 or so. Um, not calling a reversal. Uh, that's not the same thing as reversal. Reversal conditions, again, more accurately below like 21.3, I would say, is when this starts to look like a massive bull trap and back down to the current lows. <laughs> but for right now, you know, so far so good. Um, going back into it over here, obviously, if it were to fail, uh, fail, there are failure conditions. Sorry, I'm on the wrong page. Um, what would indicate a failure, thus indicating more, uh, thus indicating uh, more upside to the tune of about two and a half percent? Well, uh, that would be with a closure above the current high of this rally, twenty-two thousand eight hundred. If that happens, likely looking at about a uh, two and a half percent move to the upside, which would put Bitcoin in the short term above twenty-three three fifty or so. In my opinion, it, and in my experience, you know, it's just as valuable to know where the failure conditions are as success, um, because ultimately, you know. The, that just leads to another setup basically anyways um i think that's probably good enough for this particular video a little bit on the longer side i do want to once again let you know that uh we're also having a promotion for the jewel light or or, or premium features on the crown Train application which you can get for free by following the hey by following uh the directions in this pane over here um of which, uh, yeah, you'll get it for free for a month. And you'll also get 0% on maker fees for derivative contract orders on Bybit. Again, read the fine print with it to see if it's for you or not for you. But uh, but that information will be in the link in the description below. And again, the sale going on for a five-year anniversary, which is like literally crazy. Like how has it been five years? It doesn't feel like it's been five years, but I guess it has, um, uh, which is, well, which is happening today for the next week. All right, cool. What else it says watch the videos um cool uh with that said i want to be wishing you the best best as always take care much love and see you hopefully soon